looks like we back in business. Oh. Oh. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Can everybody hear me okay? That samurai champ will be bumping, boy. Okay, guys. He said, Where is the IC? Right here. You go. All right, guys. Before we get into the roast, I would just like to let you guys know I watched uh, six episodes because I figured it made no sense to just do a stream about one episode. It's been so long since I watched that trash. Holy shit. It's worse than I remember. Like I had my mind fixed on it. It's no way that, you know, watching it again, it could be as bad as the first time. I was wrong, wrong, wrong. There is nothing redeemable about the first six episodes. And I mean nothing. I see now why I dropped it. Once it was done, I completely understand why I just said to hell with it. Like there is, it's, it's, it's absolutely nothing happening in those first episodes. It, it's just a bunch of talking to try to lead up to something. Um, a bunch of plot crap. Hey, this leads to this and this leads to that. I ain't kidding you guys. I forgot a lot of this stuff. A lot of what happened in Dragon Ball Super. I now see why the fans of it only focus on the later episodes. They only focus on the tournament and all that stuff. And why they don't talk about the stuff at the beginning. Bad writing. Bad animation. Bad audio. Horrible story. Because there is no story. So that's why they all focus on Goku versus Jiren. Because they don't want to have to remember how horrible it was. But before we talk about that more, I have to uh, segue to something that's kind of in the realm of Dragon Ball. You guys remember the I Stand With Vic crowd? You remember the cheerleaders, Hero Hey, Umbrella Guy, Nick Ricada, Yellow Flash, Senpai is home. You know the bunch. Um, I just got done watching four or five videos uh, where they all did exactly what I told y'all they would do. I said this a long, long time ago. They all beefing. They all making exposed videos on each other. They all showing private DMs and emails and shit. I told y'all, I told y'all, I said once they were done all getting together to attack me, I told you what they were going to do. I said once they all got done attacking me, they would go back to doing what they were doing before that, which was going after each other. There's an old saying, the enemy of my enemy is an even worse enemy. I told y'all, man. I told y'all they were going to start up on each other. They even mentioned me in one of the videos. I haven't had nothing to say or do with them guys in a long time. I haven't bothered them. Got nothing to do with their little beef. And they even put me in that shit. 
they brought me up in it. I'm like, how you gonna bring me up? And I ain't got nothing to do with it. I do find it pretty funny that um, some of the same attacks that I was using against Yellow Flash and against Umbrella Guy and all that, all those people who came out and said that I was lying and I was a piece of shit, they're using the same attacks that I was using. Now, when I was using those attacks, I was a bad person. But now that they're using those attacks against him, it's cool. I, I love YouTube for that reason, man. I hate the website overall, but I love the fact that I am so right about human beings. The reason that I said that they would all turn on each other is because I know human nature. Human nature dictates everything about us. And I knew that those guys all had beef with each other. When they all teamed up to come after me, the one thing that they all had in common, besides their hatred of me, is that they all hated each other. And now they done imploded. I just put some videos in my Discord so my guys in there can tell you I'm not lying. I'm not making it up. Like, they showing addresses, phone numbers, DMs. I mean, they spilling the beans on each other. But when they accused me of that shit, I was the worst person on earth. I was the worst motherfucker on earth for doing exactly what they're doing to each other right now. I, hey, I love it, man. I'm going to sit back and just watch it unfold. I'm not going to get in it because I don't care about none of them. They all busters to me. But I just want y'all to remember who told y'all and how far back it was when I told y'all. <laughs> Another one of my prognostications comes true. All right, here. Let me, uh, let me do something real quick. Hope this thing works. All right. Now, let me move this page over here. Yeah. If it'll let me. All right, guys. I'm sitting there right now. I'm watching the. I'm watching this trash. Recap of Majin Buu, blah blah blah. Goku, Vegeta, and Hercule. Goku does this is such trash. The animation of this right now. I'm looking at it as we are talking. This is some of the worst that I've ever seen. If you can't bring yourself to admit that Toriyama and Toei did this to make money, if you're not an honest enough person to admit that, then it's something really wrong with you. Because I'm looking at it right now. You have to go back and look at it in order to remember how bad it was. Like, this animation should not have been put on public television. That's how bad it was. Like, this is some straight up shit. Yeah, yeah, crap, crap. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let me skip to the next episode. Skip. Don't care. Skip. I'm going to go back to where I was before the show started. I was on episode six, like right in the middle of episode six. Look, one through five is terrible. Very terrible. And episode five is easily the worst. That animation looked like a little kid drew it. It looked like a little kid sitting on a living room floor with a box of crayons just pulled out a piece of paper and drew Goku. It was bad. I, I really, really, oh my goodness. And I'm on episode six. It looks just as bad. I mean, episode six is just as bad. I mean, there's no story at all here. It's, I got beat up. I need to get stronger. I got beat up again. I need to get stronger. That's all this shit is. There is no adventure. That's what Dragon Ball used to be about. The original Dragon Ball wasn't about power-ups and fights and transformations. The original Dragon Ball was about an adventure that Goku went on all over the damn world. All this is is just a... They could have just done this in one location. Like, they didn't even need to go... 
to the Tournament of Power. Now, they could have just stayed on Earth and just had a bunch of fights. Because that's pretty much all that Dragon Ball Super was. Just a bunch of fights. And now here we go. with where <laughs> Beerus comes to Earth. Beat up Vegeta. He gets a flashback of his pappy. Uh, more bullshit. More bullshit. More bullshit. Vegeta makes a fool out of himself so the Beerus don't kill everybody. More bullshit. Really, really stupid. Beerus gets mad and now he's kicking everybody's ass. Um, yeah, this is dumb. Now, this is at the part where Beerus decides he want to beat people up for fucking pudding. That was the dumbest reason ever to start an intergalactic fight. Out of all the things that they could have picked to start a fight or to get him to fight Goku, you pick a fight over pudding. Pudding. Do you know how stupid that makes the Beerus character look? That he would start a battle that damn near destroyed the universe over a fucking pudding cup? That makes the character, like, and it also takes away from the seriousness of the character. Like, the whole point of Beerus, they wanted you to see a character who was so powerful, so dangerous, that with a snap of his finger, he could get rid of a galaxy. That's what they wanted to show with this character. They immediately turned this character into a joke. Like, from when Beerus first showed up to the end of Dragon Ball Super, they completely transformed the Beerus character into a complete fucking joke. Okay, and then... Right here. Beerus and Majin Buu get ready to fight after Buu licks all the pudding cups, right? Both of them touch Hercule on the chest and say, get out of the way, and blow him backwards. How is he not dead? Now, just Majin Buu doing that should kill him. But Majin Buu and a God of Destruction both push him out of the way, and it don't, like, it should have, it should have evaporated him. That's how you know this, this show is so screwed up. Like, honestly, he should have died from that. But it's Dragon Ball Super. So, of course, we can't have the comedic characters dying. Also, they completely wasted Goten and Trunks. And they, I mean, they completely wasted those two characters. No growth, no development. They destroyed the character of Gotenks. I mean, they absolutely, utterly destroyed Gotenks. And I think that's one of the things that I hate the most. Gotenks, at the end of Dragon Ball Z, Gotenks was badass. Like, he was the one thing between Majin Buu and the end of everything. And when Dragon Ball Super comes along, they turned him into a straight-up joke. For no reason, by the way. For no reason. Like, right like right now, with Beerus kicking everybody's ass on this ship, Gotenks was the most powerful person there except for maybe Vegeta. Everybody else there, they stood no chance against Gotenks. And he transforms and Vegeta says, Beerus is too much for you. Okay, Gotenks is more powerful than you. Especially Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. So... It, that didn't make any sense to me. I mean, it really didn't make any sense. You tell Gotenks to step down because Beerus is too strong, but he's stronger than you, Vegeta. That makes no fucking sense. Ultimate Gohan wasn't the strongest one there. You seem to have forgotten that his power has decreased considerably because he hasn't trained. See, we haven't gotten to that part yet. You know, the Frieza bullshit? Gohan hasn't been training. That's why he wasn't the most powerful person. It was actually Gotenks. See, y'all, this is what I'm talking about. This is Dragon Ball 101. You guys done forgot the show that y'all claim to care about. The Frieza crap came after this crap, which is still crap. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He beat up Boo. Blah, blah, blah. Kicks the shit out of everybody. This is really dumb. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Because, I mean, that's... He's the only one that still uses the form. Yeah, Gotenks is the only one that uses Super Saiyan 3 regularly. Like, he, that's his thing. As soon as he transforms, he becomes Super Saiyan 3. Okay, Dende is sitting here shaking. Oh, God, he's a god of destruction. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I don't understand? Why didn't the Kais tell them who this dude was? Like, they're, like this is the thing. I know that they warned Vegeta, okay? Wouldn't it have been smarter to warn everybody? It, like, you tell Vegeta, hey, don't piss this guy off. Don't you think it would have made sense if the North Kai would have been like, listen, dumbass Earthlings. This guy it can wipe out your whole galaxy. Don't make him mad. Would that not have made more sense? Because you know it's people at this party who's going to piss him off. So why not tell everybody? That was real stupid to only tell Vegeta. That was dumber than hell. Now, this is the part where Gotenks got completely destroyed and completely wasted a good character for all time. Well, he told Vegeta and Vegeta listened. Okay, well, let's take it a step further then. And I'm sitting there watching this trash. Let me pause this. Let's take it a step further then. You tell Vegeta. And Vegeta tells everybody else, if you piss this guy off, I'm going to destroy you. Or, don't make this guy mad or I'm going to final flash you. Vegeta could have just threatened everybody else and made them be good. So there were multiple ways to avoid this whole unnecessary problem. He could have just kicked everybody's ass and told them to be good. Because Vegeta was the strongest person at the damn, at the party until Goku showed up. So Vegeta could have just said, look, this dude's a god of destruction. If you say or do anything fucking dumb, he'll kill us all. Everybody's sitting there, oh, I can't read his chi, and blah, blah, who gives a shit? Try not pissing the dude off. Give him what he wants and shut up. Nope, they had to do it the hard way. Listen, I'm still on record as saying this. There was no reason whatsoever to introduce gods in the first place. I never liked the idea of introducing gods. Whenever you bring in gods and time travel and shit like that, it always ruins stuff. You don't need all of that mess. It never works out. And I was 100% right because look what happened to Dragon Ball Super. Once you introduce gods and time travel, it fucked the show up. And a lot of people don't even pay attention to the fact they didn't just introduce the gods once. They went to the third degree with the whole god stuff. When they brought in Zamasu and Zeno and all the angels and they brought in all the other gods of destruction and all that other bullshit, they just went 100% all in on the god stuff. That is what ruined it. Like, if they would have pulled back from that bullshit and made it more about the actual Z fighters, then maybe it wouldn't have been so bad. But they just went 100% all in on the God shit. And that's pretty much what ruined it for people like me. You took the focus off of the characters it should be on, and you put it on the Beerus and Chompa and motherfuckers like that. I mean, this is a complete waste right here. Just absolutely complete waste of time. You take one of the most powerful characters, one of the most powerful characters in Gotenks, 
and you spank him like a little kid. Hey, let me read this guy's comment here. Love the content, LOL, but if you can make an excuse, maybe Vegeta was uneasy because of, of his flashback. That it, Listen, if, if, if his flashback of Beerus made him that uneasy, then don't you think he should have told them even more? Hey, this guy stepped on my dad's head. This, this guy is absolutely no fucking joke. His flashback should have made him tell people even more. If you have a flashback about something horrible that somebody did and your friends are hanging around that horrible person, aren't you going to tell them? Aren't you going to, like, if, if we all chilling at a party and you have a flashback about a fucked up person in your group and they, they're a murderer or a rapist or something, are you going to just stand around and watch him? Or are you going to tell all your other friends, hey, this motherfucker is dangerous? I mean, I'm just saying it, it don't make sense to withhold that information. Vegeta should have told everybody, and then maybe Beerus wouldn't have got into this stupid fight over pudding. Like I said, it's the dumbest reason to make a character fight and want to destroy a planet. Beerus is millions of years old. You telling me he's such a baby that he wants to destroy a planet over pudding after being millions of years old? He has no wisdom in him whatsoever? He hasn't grown up even a little bit in a million years? Well, you know, that's another good point. Vegeta should have kicked the shit out of Majin Buu. I mean, anything. Don't get this dude riled up. Well, they introduced somebody new and powerful. The, the Goat Man, Moro. He, he's, I mean, this is, the, this is the problem that Dragon Ball faces, okay, guys? This is the number one problem that the series and the manga and all that faces. Every time there's a villain, which is mostly Frieza, it's the Z Warriors get more powerful, the villain gets more powerful, the villain loses, goes to get more powerful, comes back, they get more powerful, it's just constantly upscaling, and there is a, it never ends. It never ends. Like right now with, with the Goat Man, Goku goes and learns all this Ultra Instinct sign crap just to have it stolen away. So what is he going to learn now? He, I mean, that's my point. You, if you keep escalating it with all these brand new super powerful people, you run out of people. And it just becomes boring at that point. Look at uh, Dragon Ball GT. Dragon Ball GT did the same thing that Super's doing. Just kept introducing powerful motherfuckers. One after another after another. And the series just turned into a bunch of fights. Every damn week it's a new fight with some new guy who's more powerful than the last guy. That's all it is. That's all it is. And that's what's, hap that's what's happening to Dragon Ball Super. It's just a long line of guys showing up. Hey, hi, my name is Villain, and I'm more powerful than that last guy you beat. And Goku and Vegeta are like, oh, really? How much more powerful? Well, um, I'm like a hundred times stronger than that guy. So all of your techniques are useless. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, Whis, can you train us some more? Hey, is there another angel in the angel training department that can teach me a new power? Oh, really? Some fucking guy nobody ever heard of that you just introduced to the story? Awesome. Which way is his office? Hi, I'm Miris. I'm gonna teach you some shit you should probably already know because you knew how to do it when you fight Jiren, fought Jiren, but now you don't know it anymore for the sake of plot bullshit. So I'm gonna teach it to you again so this way you can activate it whenever you want instead of it just happening at random. You know, like, uh, whenever the plot needs to be fucking thickened a little. 
Like this shit is dumber than hell. I'm being very, 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 very sarcastic. Cause I want people to understand just how fucking stupid this show actually is. That's why I'm being sarcastic like this. This is one of the dumbest shows ever made. And it actually spits in the face of Dragon Ball Z. Be the dude's ass for pudding. See, and that there's my point. Here's my point. The Z Warriors are standing here watching this guy give Go Tanks a spanking. And they're on their they're down here saying, oh my god, he's treating Go Tanks like he's a little child. That's because even the Z Warriors know how strong Go Tanks is. They're all shocked that Beerus is treating him like a nobody. Because they know how fucking powerful he is. But you just made you just made it. You made it not matter by doing this. Completely destroyed an awesome character. Just like that. It don't matter if he's a kid. He has just as much battle experience as the rest of them. He lasted longer against Majin Buu than anybody. You Do you guys all seem to forget that? His fight with Majin Buu was long as hell. When everybody else was dead or turned into candy, Gotenks was still fighting. So he has plenty of battle experience. That's another reason why when they left him out of the Tournament of Power, I thought it was fucking dumb. You telling me that Master Roshi and Krillin are better than Goten and Trunks in a tournament for the very survival of your universe? If somebody came to me and said, we're going to erase your universe unless the most powerful people in your universe come to fight. I don't give a fuck if the most powerful person is a 10-year-old. They need to be at that tournament if they can fight and if they can kick ass. Because all of us are going to be completely blinked out of existence. So you telling me you're going to risk all of existence to bring in TN, Master Roshi, and fucking Krillin. You wasted a bunch of energy going all the way to hell to get Frieza. You telling me you couldn't jump in the time machine and go get uh, super powered up Future Trunks? The one who got an unexplained transformation out of nowhere? You telling me you can't skip through, use a time machine and grab that nigga up? Hey dude, we need your help. Yeah, I know Beerus said we can't time travel, but fuck that. He wants to win. Because Beerus cheated. He knew that Android 16, or no, Android 17 and 18, he knew that they wasn't human. And he let them in on his team. They had unlimited energy reserves because they were fucking androids. He let them on the team. You let Freeza on the team, but you won't break, you won't break the rules and time travel to get to go get trunks. A guy who fought uh, Zamasu by himself. He fought Black and Zamasu by himself. So everybody else could escape in a time machine. You won't go and get that guy? You won't go to hell and get a Libu or PyCon? I mean, uh, whatever, Afterworld or whatever other world. You won't go get them dudes, but you'll go get fucking Frieza just to keep Frieza in the story? I mean, that, that I think that's what pissed me off so much. They just kept finding ways to put Frieza in the goddamn story. Even in the movies, they keep finding ways to put Frieza in the story. I'm just so tired of it. I'm tired of the Frieza thing. And all the people who want Cooler, I don't want Cooler because that's basically just a roided out version of Frieza. And it's really stupid and I don't want that. I want them to move completely away from Frieza and Cooler and King Cold, all of that bullshit. Well, you know what? I asked that same question whenever the black arc ended. Okay? I asked the same question. I said, how come Whis didn't just leave Trunks and his girlfriend in the current time that they were in? Because he told them if he sends them back to where they came from, or if they go back, then there'll be doubles. It'll be two Trunks and two of whatever his girlfriend's name is. I forgot that bra's name. Why not just stay in the present? It was stupid. 
that whole thing was stupid. But what was even dumber than that is Whis is obviously the most powerful dude in all of the whole damn show. Because I want y'all to think about this. Zeno erased, erased Trunks' whole damn universe. His whole timeline was erased. And we says, oh, don't worry. I can send you back to a time before Zeno did that. So you telling me you can reverse time to before Zeno erased their universe. So that means you're more powerful than Zeno. That was stupid. When I heard that shit, I said, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. How are you going to just, you're just going to erase what Zeno did and send them back. I said, man, if you don't get this dumb shit out, that's why I said time travel is fucking stupid. It's fucking stupid. And time travel always gets you in trouble. Always. Anytime you watching anything, time travel gets you in trouble. The reason why I did not like Avengers Endgame as much as I liked Infinity War is because all of the Pym Particle time travel hocus pocus bullshit. Infinity War was good. Endgame, not so much because of all that time travel bullshit. That ruined it for me, man. That, and they fucked up Thanos. They fucked up his character. But I, I just don't care about all that time travel shit. And I, before anybody says, well, you didn't have a problem with it in Dragon Ball Z. Um, yeah, I did. I couldn't stand every time you look up, future Trunks is back. Every damn time a fight happens. Hey guys, look, Trunks is here. I got tired of that shit. So yeah, I did uh, dislike it in Dragon Ball Z. I don't just defend Z and, and crush Super. There's shit in Dragon Ball Z I didn't like. It's just Super, Super takes those things from Dragon Ball Z that I didn't like and they amplify them times a million. Like the power-ups and transformations. In Dragon Ball Z, you actually got to see training. Gohan, Goku, Trunks, Vegeta, Piccolo. Everybody trained and trained and trained to get new forms. They didn't just, boom, get them. The Tournament of Power Everybody was getting transformations. Kaba got new transformations. Fucking Kale. Khalifa. Everybody just getting new transformations and nobody earned them. Nobody earned them. Vegeta got a new transformation. Goku got two transformations. The Ultra Instinct Omen and then the, the complete Ultra Instinct. Like, that's, it was so stupid. Because if you remember back to Z... Look at all the pain and suffering and death and fights and trips the other world they had to make in order to gain new powers. In order, in order for Gohan to unlock Super Saiyan 2, Goku had to die and Android 16. They both had to die. Like it took all of that death and destruction from Cell to bring out his, his transformation. But in, in Dragon Ball Super, Super Saiyan 2 ain't shit. You could go and sit down on the toilet, take a shit, and become Super Saiyan 2. How could real Dragon Ball fans, how could they accept that? They turned the time chamber into a joke. Vegeta goes into the time chamber to train and blows it up. How can he blow up the time chamber when you step through the door, you step into another dimension? So how can you blow up the time chamber if you're in another dimension? You can't. They just did that because they wanted everybody to see how strong Vegeta got. It was so damn dumb. It's so dumb. Everybody knows. Look at the end of Z when, when Gotenks was fighting Boo. And they got trapped in the damn time chamber. There's no way out of it. Once the door shuts, you're stuck there for good. Except for ex extenuating circumstances. He blows the whole damn thing up. Just blow it all to fucking pieces. And flies away like it just don't matter. I was just looking at that shit. I was like, 
they just take everything about Dragon Ball Z and they just spit on it. That's pretty much what Super does. Hey, look, guys, there's something interesting from Z. Puh. Write that down. They just write it in spit. Puh, 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 and just start writing the shit. The plot troopers. That shit pissed me off. You know why I don't care how powerful villains are? Because ultimately Goku is going to be given some kind of power up to beat him. The reason why I don't care about Moro, the reason I don't care about Vegeta's new spirit form, is because Goku is going to somehow beat this dude. We all know it. The plot troopers, they piss me off because there was ne never any real explanation for why they were so powerful. They were one of the lower universes, just like everybody else in the tournament. If Jiren and Topo were so powerful, why were they in a shitty universe? Why were they not in universe one? Or one of those other universes that were that was excluded from the tournament. So even though they were that powerful, they were in one of the shitty ass universes that had to participate in the tournament. That didn't make any damn sense to me. That whole you don't have to participate if your universe has this much power. It was all bullshit. It was all just crap. And and one of the biggest follies, I think, of the whole tournament thing is Universe 7 eliminated every single other universe. Every other universe was eliminated by Universe 7. Now, I want you guys... I want you guys to think about a battle royal, okay? Let's say WWE. Royal Rumble, okay? Have you ever watched a Royal Rumble where every single other guy was eliminated by one person? Or is it a bunch of different people throwing other people over the ropes? I've never watched a Royal Rumble where one guy eliminated all 29 other people. I've never seen it. But that's, that's what Universe 7 did. They eliminated all the other universes. Do you know how impossible that is in a Royal Rumble? Do you know the odds of, of one team eliminating all the other teams in a battle royal that big? The chances of that happening are astronomical. It will never happen. It's too many teams, too many people fighting for one team to get every single elimination. That was the dumbest thing I ever seen in the Tournament of Power. And the fans of Dragon Ball Super just do not want to admit how stupid that was. They do not want to admit it. They never stopped and said, hey, wait a second. How is it that Universe 7 eliminated all these other universes? How is that even possible? What were all the other universes doing when Universe 7 was fighting against Universe 9? What was all those other people on the fucking stage doing? What, what, were they all fighting each other, yes or no? When you were having fights, like when Goku was fighting Jiren the first time around, what was everybody else doing? Were they all just standing there watching the fight? Or were they eliminating people? Here's another question. After Goku got beat, and after Jiren eliminated Hit, okay, Goku's down and out of energy. Hit's gone. How is it that all those other universes didn't take advantage of that? Two of the most powerful dudes on the damn stage are gone. How is that possible? Yet yeah, Jiren eliminated a couple of people. He eliminated individuals, but he did not eliminate whole teams. Jiren knocked off certain folks, but then Universe 7 finished off the whole damn team. That's my point. That's not possible in a battle royal. It's simply not possible. But in the world of Dragon Ball Super, it is possible. Not only is it possible, it's preferable because they want Goku to win. Let me look at some more of this trash. 
Holy crap, I forgot how bad this was. Boring, boring, excruciatingly boring. My back is hurting, it's so boring. This is dumb boring. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Stupid, more stupid. Okay, Beerus slaps the shit out of Bulma. How does she survive? And I understand it was just a moment put in there to give an excuse to give a power up to Vegeta. But how does she survive being slapped by a god of destruction? And the reason I ask is because the same amount of energy and the same amount of, of power that he used when he tapped that table and blew that planet in half, y'all remember that? When he said, I'll only do half this time, he tapped his finger on the table, blew half a planet up. you That's the same amount of force that he used to slap her. How is she not dust? How is she not dust? You telling me he can regulate his power flow to that point where he can downgrade his shit to basically mortal to where he can't hurt anybody by pecking him on the cheek? She should have died. Look how far she flew across the damn thing. Goten and Trunks had to catch her ass because that's how far she flew. She should have died. And all the fanboys was, oh, Vegeta, new power up. Only thing that Vegeta got was Super Saiyan 2. That's it. He finally learned Super Saiyan 2 after somebody slapped the shit out of his wife. Stupid as fuck. This is stupid. My wife! If you care that much about your wife, you would have took the fight somewhere else. All this was was so he could power up. That's all this shit was. Because all this show is about is stupid power ups. That's it. They just need an excuse to show somebody getting a transformation, getting a power up. Every episode, they just need an excuse. When you're as powerful as Whis and Beerus, do you even blink an eye when these motherfuckers transform? Like, do you even just be like, Pfft. Beerus could honestly stand there, close his eyes, take a nap, and let Vegeta just punch him all day and he wouldn't even feel it. So why even go through all the theatrics? You got lightning and spiky hair. That's it. That's what you got. This is dumb. The, it, it's really dumb. The same way they get excited over over Ultra Instinct, I don't know how anybody got excited because Vegeta fucking powered up. You missed my point, Cloud. You missed my point. And why you name yourself after a Final Fantasy character? Jesus Christ. So you one of those guys, as soon as something new come out, that's the name of your channel? I'm not talking... I know he already knew Super Saiyan 2 from when he was possessed by fucking uh, Bobbity. I know that already, dude. No, what I'm saying is this is the first time that he released Super Saiyan 2 on his own without the power-up that he received from Bobbity. That's what I'm talking about. Everybody else in the chat understood that. You're the only person who's like, Nuh-uh, he already knew Super Saiyan 2. Duh, you missed the point entirely. No, uh, I got you. You don't know what you talking about. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Quit trying to play gotcha games. Shut up and enjoy the show, nigga. Cause you ain't never gonna get, you ain't gonna never get over on me. I know what I'm talking about. I've forgotten more about Dragon Ball than you know. So you'll never get me. Blah, blah, blah. Let me destroy the earth. Blah, blah, blah. Crap, crappity, crap. Rock, paper, scissors. Goku comes back. 
He talks a bunch of shit. I'm here to fucking do this. I've been watching the fight the whole time. Blah, blah, blah. Trying to get a strategy. They take a close-up of Babysitter Piccolo. Nobody gives a shit. Um, and then they start the stupid God ritual crap. I'm stopping it there. I don't even need to see the rest. We'll save some more for another time. I don't want to go too far into it. He's my favorite character. I don't give a shit if he's your favorite character. You think because he's your favorite character that's going to stop me from saying what I want? I got a favorite character too. These Nuts. That's my favorite character. These Nuts. Nobody give a fuck. It's my favorite character. How dare you talk about him? Fuck that character. Hang on a minute here. Doing some shit. Checking, checking, checking. Check <laughs> Look, man. My job is to not give a shit about Dragon Ball and all this other crap. Okay? I come on here simply to say what I want about this trash. Because this trash is trash. And that's all it is to it. You guys are welcome to like it. You guys are welcome to be cool with it, be friends with it. I don't care. I have, I'm not trying to make other people feel how I feel about it, okay? I don't want any of you guys to agree with me just for the sake of agreeing with me. If you like the show, you got a right to like what you like. If you don't like it, you got a right to not like it. But I don't like what Dragon Ball Super did to Dragon Ball as a whole. That's been my problem with it. It took a lot of things from Dragon Ball Z and fucked it up. It ruined Vegeta's character, ruined Frieza. Beerus was already a character I didn't want in the first fucking place. Do I ever think it's gonna come back? Um, I hope not, because it was garbage. If you're going to bring it back, fix it. You need to fix it. You need to get rid of all the gods and all that stuff. Just get rid of that stuff, and you need to get rid of the god transformations. Goku, Vegeta, the other Saiyans, they need to, they need to train and master the forms they already know. You don't need to keep adding all these forms, because... Ultra Instinct has taken over. That's all people care about now. Fuck all the other Super Saiyan forms that could be more powerful. Broly is proof that you can have a super powered Super Saiyan form. Okay? He's proof of that. You don't have to have God power. Because Broly was doing a pretty good job against a fused God level Saiyan. He was holding his own. Without a major God power up, Broly was holding his own. So he's proof you don't need the God power stuff. Just train up your forms and power them up. But no, we got to have red hair, blue hair, gray hair. It's stupid. They done got so lazy, they don't even change the way Goku's hair looks anymore. They just change the color of it. Like, that's how lazy they done got it used to be when they transformed into Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3, whatever, they hair at least looked a little different. Now it's just the same color. I mean, it's just the same hair with a recolor. That's all it is. It's trash. This is why I keep on saying the Dragon Ball community is absolutely fucking dumb. Because you'll accept recolors. You'll accept the shit. Toriyama Sensei, give me some more recolors. Please. That shit dumb, man. Like, if they bring it back, fix it. That's all I got to say about it. Well, that's... Listen. Everybody keeps saying Ultra Instinct is something that anybody can do. Well, if that's the case, how come Goku the only one doing it? Look, you can tell me all day that anybody can attain Ultra Instinct. Anybody can learn it. You can tell me that all day. But as long as you only got one character using it, I don't want to hear it. It's, it, it. it's the phenomenon called piss on your head and tell me it's raining. That's what, that's what it is. Oh, anybody can learn Ultra Instinct. So it's not really a transformation for Goku. Well, I can't tell. Ain't nobody else doing it. 
There ain't nobody else doing it. Whenever somebody else uses it, let me know. Then, then we can talk. The reason they can't become better is because they already rely too much on transformations. They already rely too much on them. The minute that they learned how to become Super Saiyans, that's when they started declining. Because if they would have kept training their base forms like they did when they trained under Whis, because a lot of y'all forget, when they trained on Beerus' planet, they did not transform into Super Saiyans. They trained in their base forms the whole time. If you train the base form, the other ones will be even more powerful. Training with Beerus, look what happened with, with the training. When they came back to fight Frieza, Goku didn't even have to transform to Super Saiyan Blue to fight Frieza. He just did it because him and Frieza was having a dick measuring contest. But Goku could have beat Frieza with the black hair. He didn't even have to transform. When Frieza transformed to his full power form, not the golden form, but his full power, Goku didn't even go Super Saiyan. He was like, I don't even think I need to. Because Goku was already so powerful from training his base level that he didn't even need to transform to beat Frieza. He just bullshitted around and let Frieza go into his gold form. But he could have beat Frieza way before that. And that was just from training the base form. You don't need all them dumbass transformations. But hey, the, all the series is about now is transformation. If, if if they came out right now and they said no more tra no more transformations Goku and Vegeta are just gonna get stronger and keep the black hair I think a lot of people would stop watching because a lot of them watch simply for transformations you want to know why no one gives a shit about mystic Gohan because his hair don't change colors he looks just like regular Gohan when he goes into his mystic form. And the fanboys don't like it. They don't like mystic Gohan. They don't like the transformation because he don't have golden hair and blue eyes. He just looks like himself. Just a really powered up version. And they don't like that. But I bet you if his hair was all wavy and gold, they would love that shit. It's all about transformations now. I'm sick of transformations. I would like some damn character development, please. That's what I would like. I'm tired of transformation. Look, all you people that keep calling Ultra Instinct a technique, you can call it that. But until I see other people using this technique, I'm gonna call it what it is. It's a transformation that has been given specifically to Goku. Vegeta ain't using it, Piccolo ain't using it, Gohan ain't using it. Fucking Beerus ain't using it. Nobody else is using it. So until someone else uses Ultra Instinct, it's a transformation that they made for Goku. If, if I mean, look, you can call it a technique all you want. I'm calling it what it actually is. Calling it a technique is just a slick ass way of trying to get out of what it actually is. And I'm not a dumbass fanboy. So I'm not going to sit here and play word games. I know what it is. It's a bullshit transformation that they gave to Goku. Because people are like, oh, well, it's kind of like Kaioken. No, the fuck it's not. Kaioken don't give you gray eyes and white hair. This And this is the thing that I, I don't understand about the Dragon Ball community. Every time Goku's hair changes colors, you motherfuckers call it a transformation. Ultra Instinct changes his eyes and his hair to totally different colors. And y'all say, well, that's not a transformation. That's a technique. How? When his eyes turn blue and he gets yellow hair, it's a transformation. But when his eyes turn gray and he gets white hair, it's a technique. 
I want y'all to tell me how the fuck that makes sense. Because the same exact thing is happening. His hair changing colors. His eyes are changing color. Same exact shit. But one's a transformation. One's a technique. Stupidest fan base in all of existence. They can look at two things that are identical. The same exact thing. And they can still say they're different. That's how stupid the Dragon Ball community is. Oh, I know they, they look identical, but they're totally different. One of them is a technique that anybody can do. Well, why ain't anybody doing it? There's only one motherfucker doing it. Ain't no anybody doing it. I'm not, I, and all I'm saying is, quit telling us that anybody can use it and show us that anybody can use it. That's what I'm saying. If Vegeta can learn it, Gohan can learn it, Piccolo can learn it. Then what? If Moro is such a threat, if this goat is such a threat, why does Miris waste time talking about bullshit? Shouldn't they be training all of the Z Warriors to learn Ultra Instinct? Oh, and by the way, I read the manga where Goku was learning this shit. All he did was the same thing he does: train. It was fight training. So I, I need to understand something. You fight with an angel or angel in training, whatever the fuck this dude is. You fight with him, you learn Ultra Instinct. But if you spar with Vegeta, you don't get nothing out of it. Because all he did was have a sparring match with Miris. Miris didn't hit him with any kind of beam or ray to give him a transformation or a technique. All he did was fight with him. The same thing Goku and Vegeta do. They just sparring. So how did he learn Ultra Instinct from sparring? That's like me picking up a goddamn sword and going in there and fighting with another sword guy. And all of a sudden, I know Bushido. Just like that. Or I become a samurai instantly because I go in there and sword fight with a dude. It doesn't make sense that just because he had a sparring match with this guy, he all of a sudden has a new technique, as you idiots want to call it. It's stupid. Look, all of y'all done read the shit, okay? Y'all done seen it. Tell me what Miris did in any of those manga pages that, that shows you how Goku ended up with this new power. How did he unlock this power by have, throwing punches at somebody? How do they unlock anything by throwing punches, matter of fact? Forget Ultra Instinct. Any transformation. Just throwing punches. That's all. How does that give you a, the technique of the gods? And I find it funny it's the technique of the gods, but none of the gods are using it. Oh, this technique is so advanced that even the gods, people who've been around for millions of years, can't use it. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that. The gods are millions of years old. Beerus is millions of years old. You telling me in millions of years, this guy can't master this technique? In millions of years. But Goku can do it in one 48-minute tournament. Think about that now. 48-minute tournament, he masters something that a god can't master in millions of years. That's the stupidest thing in all of time. But the Dragon Ball fan base just eating it up with a spoon. Gobble, gobble. They didn't even stop to think about that dumb shit. They don't even give it a second thought. You shut up, you're a hater. You just don't like us having fun. I actually had a guy comment on my shit today and he said, I'm trying to take away their fun by criticizing a shitty ass anime that is not hurting him. All he got to do is not listen to me. But he accused me of trying to take away their fun. Why don't you just let us have fun and let us like what we want to like? I have not once ever said you can't like Dragon Ball. I've never said you can't like Dragon Ball Super. I've never told people to stop watching it. 
All I've ever done is gave my opinion on it like everybody else. Because you don't like my opinion on it, you're accusing me of trying to take your fun away. That's what makes you a fucking faggot. That right there, that's that's the instance when you become a punk. You're trying to take away our fun. No, I'm just doing what I got a right to do. I'm criticizing something. We all have that right. But apparently, apparently you're not allowed to criticize something if you have any kind of issue or problem with it. If you like something, you can say anything you want about it. It don't matter. You're going to get a pass. But if you don't like it, you got to shut up. That's, that's YouTube, guys. It ain't just the anime community. Now, the anime community is really bad about it. I'm not going to lie. They, the anime community is one of the worst that I've ever seen when it comes to that shit. But it is a lot of communities that do it. The shut up, you ain't allowed to say something because you don't agree with me bullshit. There you go. For all you punk ass motherfuckers that don't like my opinion. There you go. Your boy telling you right now to get a damn job. Fucking losers. Fucking losers. To even come on my video and say, you're trying to take away our fun. What kind of grown ass man even let that come out of their mouth? What kind of grown ass man actually type in those words? You, you, you tell another grown man they're trying to take away your fun by having an opinion. I didn't do anything to you. I didn't come to your house. I didn't harass you. All I did was gave my opinion on something. And I'm trying to take away your fun. And you, you guys wonder why I'm so hard on, on the anime community. So many people ask me, why are you so mean and so savage when it comes to these? Because they're fucking bitches, guys. I have to be as real as humanly possible. The anime community is filled up with so many bitches. You can enjoy anime and still act like a grown-ass man. Still act like you got a dick between your legs. You don't have to act like these little jobless punks. These guys choose to act like bitches. Because they know the people that get that get the most views are the ones that are liked. Like, they want to be liked. Hey, guys. Please like me. Please be my friend. Hey, guys. Suck a dick. And you don't have to like me. Watch and go. See how easy it is? It's an easy exchange. You ain't got to worry about being my friend. You ain't got to like me. You ain't got to agree with me. You can watch and then get the fuck out of here. But on they channels, come on, guys. Let's take a trip down Goku Lane. I be listening to these dudes and I be like, I just be sitting there like this. I listened to a video where a guy actually said that Dragon Ball Heroes was good. This was a good episode, guys. Completely made up fan service bullshit. It was awesome. Make sure to go to my Patreon. Oh, boy, them fucking guys, man. I can't, if you do that kind of shit on your channel, fuck you all the way. Because you are one of the fakest pieces of shit on this website. You know who you are. You are 1,000% fake if you talking like that on your channel. I'm sure you guys have seen channels like that. I've seen several of them just today. Come on, guys. Let's get into the story. Once upon a time, I came to a cabin, and Goku opened the door with his dick out, and I started sucking it. Here's the link to my Patreon. Like, you motherfucking bitch-made, punk-ass, hoe-ass niggas. Boy, that shit be burning me up, man. That shit be burning me up. I can't stand them motherfuckers. 
I ain't gonna lie, man. There's some things I can control my anger on. But them dudes, I just can't stand they motherfucking asses. That fake ass, the fake voices they be using. They try to do that friendly, uh, subscribe to my channel bullshit. I can't stand them motherfuckers, man. I'm gonna tell you straight up. If you like entertainment, sub to my channel. If you don't like entertainment, suck a dick. Don't nobody give a shit. You still gonna watch whether you subbed or not. I'm done caring about subscriber counts. Somebody told me today, you're almost at 10,000, so? Don't make a fuck to me. It ain't gonna change nothing. I'm still gonna do the same kind of content. But you think when I get to 10,000, I'm gonna be a new person? Hey guys, it's Major Stacks here. And we got some major Dragon Ball news. Now that I'm at 10,000 subs, yay, go team. Nigga, suck my dick. That's gonna be my 10,000 sub video. Fuck all of y'all. I'm like, hey guys, I'm at 10,000. All of y'all can go suck a dick. See y'all on the next stream. Goodbye. That'll be my video. I'm not finna do all that. All these, man, listen. I know I have sat back and watched YouTubers. They change when they start growing. They channels change, they personalities change, they attitude towards shit changes. I have watched some of the guys that I used to watch that I done unsubbed from their channels. I have watched and as they get bigger, they completely become different people. I make you a solemn promise, whether it's 10,000 or 100,000, I'm still going to tell y'all to go fuck yourselves. That's never gonna change. I don't give a shit if you get mad, if it hurts your feelings, if you decide not to watch me that day, fuck you. I don't care. I'm never, ever gonna trade in my soul and do like these other motherfuckers. Cause you guys know who I'm talking about. Y'all know specific names of people that I'm not gonna mention, who once they channel hit a certain point, you didn't even recognize they asses anymore. You didn't even know who the fuck they were anymore. Totally new people. Hey guys, I'm at 15,000 today. Time to start sucking that YouTube cock. Fuck you, nigga. Fuck YouTube. That shit'll never happen to me. I hate this website. I'll never bow down to it. I promise you on that shit. When I, when I get to 10,000 or 20,000 or whatever it is, y'all ain't finna get this right here. Y'all know what's coming. This ain't finna be me. To become great on YouTube, we must all climb the wall of dicks. Hurry up, my child. There's not much time to waste. This is your moment. Make it count, boy. When you don't want to wear female underwear, when you don't even care what other people say, I've done a lot of shit just for attention, just for attention. Give me attention.
crazy, man. And then you said you skipped my dick, man. I'm sorry. That's the funniest damn part of that whole song, man. How you gonna tell another dude you skipped my dick? <laughs> Oh man, that's super funny, man. You skipped my dick. That's hey, that's all them motherfuckers though, man. They get a certain point and they just I've been watching, man, these anime channels are the worst. When they start getting subscribers, man, these motherfuckers change. Look how many people left cuz I played that song. It went from 150 to 132. Damn, y'all hate that song too. Shit. Damn mustache tickling my nose. All them people got mad and left. My bad. I didn't mean to play that, guys. I didn't mean to piss y'all off. Hang on a minute. I'll make it up to you. Goddamn. I'll play something that I know y'all are like. trying to help y'all out a little bit. He said you get a dislike for that. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Uh, that's fine. You got to write to dislike the video. That's cool. And I got a right to say this. On the way, I want to see them pay. The look on their faces, everything that I want to see. I'm impatient, I can't take it. I'm tired of waiting. Taste the revenge. Everybody always want to ride in the Benz. Get tired of be friends, but I'll never forget. When I had nothing, they left me for dead. When I make a man bitch, say what you said. Oh, no, you not fly. Oh, you not that guy. But watch how shit can change. And you'll be hating. I'll be waiting. Same. Talk about it, you get the dislike. Now they go my they go my uh, response to the dislike. <laughs> oh, anything else to say? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a second. Oh, what's this? What's this? You think I should actually show it on the screen? Is that what he said? He said it don't count unless he can actually see it. Really? Oh, you know I don't mind helping y'all out. You done with me. It's unbelievable. Uh, but Up your meal, man. <laughs> All right, I ain't mean to mess up your meal, man. I'm just messing with y'all. <laughs> well, hey, they got talking shit, man. I'm just helping y'all out. Oh, also, guys, I got playing some retrospectives 
on some other stuff too. I got some retrospectives that I got planned on uh, on Boruto, on SAO. Like I really haven't just grounded in how much I hate those shows. So I'm definitely gonna uh, do that. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna touch on Black Clover. I really, it sucks balls. Um, now I know all the Black Clover guys are mad because the anime is going on a hiatus, but it don't really matter because all they talk about is the manga anyway. Like all the Black Clover channels, all they do is the manga. So I don't know why they care about the anime. Why be mad that the anime is going away? I'll be, when the whole thing goes away, I'll be happy. Yeah, once it all goes away, then talk to me. I don't really care if like the anime goes away, but the manga still keeps going, then what's the point? The only way it'll be satisfying to me is if both of them are gone. Well, listen, there's nothing wrong with liking Black Clover. I've never told you guys that y'all have to dislike it because I dislike it. See, that's, a, that's another uh, misconception, by the way. It's another misconception. Just because I dislike shows or I roast shows or whatever, people like to tell the lie. They like to tell the lie that I tell you guys that y'all have to do the same thing. And you can go back and listen to all of my streams and this, that, and other where I'm roasting stuff. I always make sure that you guys understand. It's how I personally feel about said topic. I in no way, shape, form, or fashion try to make you guys feel how I feel. I never try to tell you, you have to believe what I believe or else. I've never done that on my streams. I tell you how I feel about it. I tell you what my eyes saw. And then I tell y'all, if you like it, cool. If you don't, you don't. But there's always people out there. He tries to make people not like stuff because he don't like it. That shit is so not true. It's super not true. Well, I've seen Black Clover. What, is, what does that mean? I just I, I just believe you can't truly dislike something if you haven't actually seen ep an episode. I've seen Black Clover. I've watched it. What are you talking about? I have watched Black Clover. I have watched My Hero. I've watched a lot of these new shows. That's why I can criticize them, because they're trash. <laughs> Look, today's anime fan, they're, they ain't as deep as older anime fans. Older anime fans, we wanted a story, a good story. These guys now, they just want Flash. They want to see some skin. They want to see a, a magical girl in, with big boobs. Like that Demon Hunter shit. How come every chick on there, it looked the same? Every chick on there, they all got huge titties, a small waist. They all look the same. Every, you mean to tell me there are no ugly chicks anywhere in that whole world? Same thing with SAO. Every chick in SAO is it they look like the perfect 10 guys if any of y'all ever played an mmorpg you want to know what all the people on the other end of those characters look like they look like fat motherfuckers that eat doritos and drink cokes all day nobody sitting online playing mmorpgs all day look like those motherfuckers in sao you telling me a game like sao Every girl you meet in the game looks just like her avatar or close to her avatar. You telling me you honestly think that's what people look like? You guys seen that episode of South Park where they were playing World of Warcraft and they finally showed the dude who was behind the character that was killing everybody and he was a fat dude eating Doritos. That's what's on the other end of, of those characters. And a lot of those female characters y'all see in video games are guys. They're dudes. Don't none of them chicks in SAO that none of that shit's real. <laughs> that shit that's I think that's the fakest premise ever for a damn uh, for anime. If you're gonna make an anime of a, a, a MMORPG, you can't make every single girl a sex symbol because it's just not real. 
and you can't make all the dudes look the way they look. And then, listen, nobody looks like their avatar in real life. If you play MMORPGs, you create a character online, you do not look like that character when you log off. How come everybody in SAO look just like they fucking character? <laughs> and they all happen to live in the same town. All these friends, they all live in the same town. They all drink at the same bar and eat at the same bar. Even the token black guy, A. Gill, the big nigga, he owns a bar that they all hang out at. How is that even possible? I have never met a single person that I have played an MMRPG online with. Even motherfuckers who live where I live. I've never actually met them. But you telling me the motherfuckers at SAO, not only do they log off and they look just like they avatars, but they all log off and they all meet at the same fucking place? Fuck that stupid shit. How can anybody like that dumbass show? How can anybody be a fan of that stupid ass show? <laughs> it's just, it's dumb. It, it just, it's not possible. It's simply not possible, but exactly. There are no fat people. There are no fat people in SAO. And I'm going to tell you, the Alfheim arc was even worse than the, the Ironcrad arc. The Ironcrad one was bad. And especially the fact that this nigga came back from the dead to beat the commander uh, 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 Heathcliff dude. He, like, he was dead. And he can't, the power of penis made him come back. Because he wanted to bang Asuna so bad in the real world that he came back after being killed and killed this dude. That was some bullshit. But no, 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 no. We got to make it even worse. Let's go to part two and let's put him in a video game with his own sister who wants to get him some trim. This nigga own sister. The episode where she finds out the dude she in love with in the video game is her brother. They log out just to find out that she actually is in love with her own brother. That shit is absolutely nauseating. That bitch actually said, I'm in love with my brother. That is the snatch. Fuck it, man. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> and people are actually fans of that shit. You actually... And then, let, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Let me tell you how fucked up it is. This is how fucked up it is. She wanted to fuck him so bad, she tried to justify it. She said, we're not really brother and sister. We're cousins, so it's okay. What the fuck? Like when, when, when Jesus Coon said, well, wait, me and you were, she said, no, we're not. I know you're not my brother and, and I'm not your sister. We're fucking cousins. I just seen that shit. I was like, your relatives, fuck ass. You want to get this dude some pussy so bad, even though he's your own brother and niggas is sitting online looking at this bullshit. So you, you, I mean, in every episode, he's saving some chick. You, you had to save, you had to save the, the blacksmith chick. You tricked her into thinking you was interested. You had to save the dumb chick with the dragon on her head. You had to, you had to save Asuna. <clears throat> in SAO 2, where they introduced Xenon, that's why I call it Sinon's ass online. Guys, go watch SAO2. Go watch that shit. <laughs> These... <laughs> You'll see why I call it Sinon's ass online. That's all I'm saying. It's a 
fucked up ass show. How can anybody, and I mean anybody, like SAO? God, it's so stupid, man. How, I mean, how can, if I was the voice actors for that show, I'd be like, wait a second. I'd be like, look, hold on a minute, y'all. Look, hold on a minute. Oh, I'm like, all right, hold on, but let me be like, Ugh. you reading your lines, right? You're like, wait, wait, hold up a minute. Hold up. I'm supposed to say that I'm in love with my brother. I'm actually supposed to say that. Yeah, that's one of your lines. I quit. I quit. I quit. I quit. I quit. Why? It's just a TV show. Fuck you. I quit. I'm not doing it. Fuck you. That's what you're supposed to say. You <laughs> fuck that shit, man. Throw that script on the floor and leave. <laughs> Guys, the first time I ever, like somebody else told me about SAO. Because <clears throat> I had never watched it. Somebody else told me. They said, dude, it's a part when you get to it, it'll make you never want to watch the show again. I was like, no anime could be that fucking bad. He said, he said the an it's not that the anime is bad. He said, watch the show and you'll understand. Guys, two episodes and I realized what SAO was. It was an anime dude's wet dream turned into a video game. The guy who made SAO was having a really long wet dream with video games mixed in. That shit is his dream version of a, of a video game. A bunch of harem bitches hanging around and one guy in the middle and all of them in love with him. That That's his dream. It was just a wet dream he was having when he made that shit. I was just looking at it like, what the fuck? It really... I can't listen. SAO is always gonna be on my list of most hated anime. It's always gonna because it's just so fucked up. Then listen, when they get to the part where he finally rescues Asuna, you got a 24-year-old dude ripping off the clothes of a 17-year-old, getting ready to rape her while she's chained up. And her boyfriend's laying on the ground watching and can't do nothing about it. Really, SAO? Really? You got a 17-year-old girl in a coma and a 24-year-old dude trying to rape her in a video game. Fuck that shit, man. Look, I know some of y'all haven't watched SAO. You gotta go watch it. I can't I can't explain how horrible it is. It's so much sexual tension wrapped up in that show that it should not be on TV. It honestly should be on one of those adult only anime sites. Cause it's so much sexual tension. It, it's 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 nowhere near close to being something that kids should be looking at. I don't even want my sons watching it. Like you got a whole part of the show where you got this little Tinkerbell chick, this little lolly chick, calling these motherfuckers mommy and daddy. Two teenagers who don't have jobs and they sit in their parents' rooms all day with helmets on, laying in bed. And you got this little Tinkerbell thing calling them mommy and daddy. <laughs> that shit is stupid as fuck. Man, I remember that. I remember that. The first season, Asuna, like, Jesus Kuhn rescues everybody from the blue-eyed demon. They go back to her place. They eat food. And then this bitch start taking off her clothes. And, and, and Jesus Kuhn is like, hey, wait a second. I, I didn't come here for that. She gets mad at him and punches him. But she start taking off her clothes. He didn't ask her to. That bitch just starts stripping. I'm like... What the fuck am I looking at? And don't even get me started on Alicization. When he fought that naked administrator chick, 
Ain't nobody who's a fan of this show yet explained to me. Jesus Coon gets ready to fight this chick. No one has explained to me yet why she takes off all of her clothes. She was fully clothed when they got to the room where she was at. She takes off all of her clothes and then whips out a sword. Why? Why do you gotta be naked to fight? It was just, it made no sense. This dude said it was for a speed boost. <laughs> yeah, it was a speed boost, all right. <laughs> That's the only speed boost that it was. Shit. They boosted how fast they were jerking they gherkin. What a fucking speed. Oh my god. Shit. <laughs> this nigga's got a speed boost, alright? They motherfucking hands were hurting like a motherfucker when they got done. <laughs> Man, when I saw that shit, I, I listen. When I saw that fight, I was so mystified by how stupid it was. Because there was no excuse or rhyme or reason to take off her clothes. Except so fanboys could see a naked chick fighting. It was dumber than hell, and everybody knows it was. SAO is all, all in all a stupid fucking anime. And the new shit is dumb too. The alicization is dumb. The underworld shit. All that shit is stupid. Because all it's going to turn into is the same shit. Jesus Coon going to save the day and get the fuck a bunch of hoes. Shit, I was about to watch uh, Shield Hero the, the other day, but then I just changed my mind. I said, you know what? I want to watch it, but I'm not gonna. I'm just not gonna do it. Because I just remember how they fucked it up. So I just did, said no. Anything is better than Boruto? Hey, go for it. I'm not telling you don't watch it. Go ahead. If you wanna, if you wanna watch uh, SAO and all that weirdness, go right ahead. It ain't my place to tell you what to watch. It's just my place to tell you how fucked up it is. Goblin Slayer was a big disappointment to me. It's, it was one of the biggest disappointments. Goblin Slayer started out amazing. I mean, it started out as hardcore as an anime can get nowadays. We ain't seen an anime that hardcore in a long time. Like, it literally starts off with a chick getting raped and motherfuckers getting murdered. And then the fans started whining. I'd never forget when Crunchyroll put that message on the thing, adding a warning to the show because people were on Crunchyroll's website complaining about Goblin Slayer. You finally get an anime that's not full of shit. You finally get an anime that's not watered down, and you complain. They did the same thing. Um, uh, they, they complained about uh, Vinland Saga and they complained about Attack on Titan. The reason they couldn't do nothing about Vinland Saga is because it's on Prime Video. That's owned by Amazon. So they couldn't do shit. Amazon said, fuck y'all. We gonna put our shit up and ain't nothing y'all can do about it. Jeff Bezos got so much money, he don't give a fuck about your complaints. He don't give a fuck. He said, I'm not changing shit. I'm not telling them to change nothing. Fuck y'all. And, and Attack on Titan, they didn't change nothing either. And by the way, the same studio makes both of them shows. That's why they epic. I'm just saying. That's why they both epic ass shows. And they didn't give a fuck. I'm just saying, man, we gonna make what we wanna make. Suck a dick. Look, I don't like harem lolly anime at all. I don't like them. I want the anime to be about what they're supposed to be about. Shield Hero is a good anime. Up until they start the lolly stuff. It's a good anime. But when they get into all that raccoon girl now, I fuck it. That's when I lose interest. I don't care about that. The fights in, in Shield Hero are good. 
I mean, you think about it. They managed to find a way to make a fight with a guy using a shield. Exciting. Imagine that. Just think about it. The only thing he got is a fucking shield. No sword, no spear, nothing. Just a shield. And they managed to make that shit exciting. And then they fuck it all up by talking about a raccoon girl. Fuck that stupid shit. The fact that you managed to pull that off, the fact that you managed to make that show exciting, and then you're going to turn around and do all that to it, fuck all that, man. I gave that Demon Hunter shit a try. I don't really care about it. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying I don't care about it. Um, My Hero, this this uh, last season was boring as fuck. Um, I don't care about Black Clover because it's just a Naruto clone. I mean, honestly, I really don't have any reason to watch anime. I don't. I don't really have a reason to watch anime right now. <clears throat> yeah, just because I don't like a show, guys, don't mean that it's a bad show. It just means that it's not my cup of tea. I would like people to understand that. You might like it. Other people might like it. But I have a particular, like, a particular style of anime that I like. And if I don't see that then I get bored and I turn it off. And you know my style. Attack on Titan, Villain Saga, Scryde, Trigun, Inuyasha. That, that's, that's my lane. Yu Yu Hakusho, Cowboy Bebop, Outlaw Star. That's my lane, guys. Big O, um, Evangelion, Blue Gender, I mean, those are my shows. Yeah, uh, exactly. Afro Samurai, Samurai Champloo. If it ain't like those, I don't give a shit. And I'm just being real. If it ain't like those, I don't give a shit. Now, I do like One Punch Man. I didn't like season two as much as season one. But I did, I did, um... I did like One Punch Man. Season one was uh, was epic. I liked it, but I think they messed up some things in season two. <clears throat> now the fight at the end of season one was amazing. Like that was an amazing fight. I don't give a fuck who who don't like it. That that fight with Lord Boros was a badass fight. I mean the music, the everything. It was incredible. Like I I honestly was watching it. The, Sitting up in my bed, I was like, God damn, this shit going off. Man, this is some awesome shit. I gotta fucking stay awake for this. <clears throat> there ain't too many animated. I, you know, when I get sleepy, I just doze off and say, fuck it, and watch it the next day. But when it came to that fight, I had to stay up and watch that shit, man. Now, there were some moments in the second season that were pretty cool, but I didn't, overall, I didn't really like the second season that much. But that's not to say that it was bad. It's just to say it ain't my thing. Yeah, I'm I'm not going to really like super get back into anime. Even though I'm back to doing this again, I'm, I'm not going to break down and start reading manga and watching anime every single day. I'm still too damn busy for that. Um... Matter of fact, Saturday I'm leaving, and I, I'm gonna be gone from uh, for four days. I'm gonna be on the road working. Uh, the, let's see the um, the third, fourth, fifth, and the sixth. I'm I'm not gonna be at home, be out of town. Um, I'm gonna be staying at a hotel while I while I work because I'm I'm going to another city to do some work, and then I'm coming back. So uh, y'all probably get like some some quick raw video uploads or whatever, but um. I'm not going to be doing any streaming, but when I get home, I'm going to be off the rest of that week, and then I can catch back up on the streaming. <clears throat> what are my thoughts on Tower of God? I don't really care about it. I don't like it. But, like I said, that don't necessarily mean it's bad. It just means I don't like it. And I actually took a chance and looked at it. I don't want people to think I haven't watched it. I actually, I actually looked at it today. 
It just ain't what I like. What are my thoughts on Supernatural? Well, since I've been watching it since the first season, um, it's one of the most amazing shows on TV right now. I hate that it's ending. Supernatural has always been high on my list. It's one of the best shows ever made. Now, I've been watching Supernatural back when CW was called WB. That's how long I've been watching Supernatural. Sam Sam and Dean Winchester is the shit. And um, Dean Winchester, Jansen Eccles is his real name. He got his start on Smallville. A lot of y'all don't remember that. But he used to date, uh, what's her face, Lana Lane. He, used, he was the uh, gym teacher at Smallville High School. He used to date her uh, after she dated Clark Kent. Yeah, he, a lot of people don't even remember that. He also does the voice for Red Hood in the uh, in the Red Hood mo uh, animated movie. Jansen Eccles does the voice for Robin. Um, um, you know, Jason Todd. A lot of people don't. That's why I said they need to make a Red Hood live action movie and Jansen Eccles needs to be the guy that, that, that plays the part of Jason Todd because he does the voice for the animated uh, Red Hood. That shit will be amazing if it's done right. Red Hood has to be done perfectly. If you screw it up, I will be so angry. So if they gonna, I don't want them to do it if they're going to mess it up. The only way I want Red Hood is if I know they ain't going to fuck it up. But if there's a chance they're going to screw it up like they did the Suicide Squad, then don't make it. Just leave it alone. It's just best that way. Because they fucked Suicide Squad up. Now, I know they remaking it, but until I see the remake, I don't really give a shit. I didn't care about Mob Psycho. I never cared about that shit. I don't know why so many people did. I mean, it didn't really matter to me. Attack on Titan manga. Yeah, I read that every now and then. That's actually the only manga that I ever read. I don't read none of the other ones because I don't care about them. What are my thoughts on New Mutants? Uh, nothing. Don't really care about it. Vinland Saga is the only thing to come close to the level of Attack on Titan. Like, I, I would give Vinland Saga, there are several times in Vinland Saga where it's actually better than Attack on Titan. But overall, Attack on Titan is, is still better because it's been going longer, more development, more stuff. I, I think Vinland Saga might be a one-off. There, there's a chance that it may not come back. Um... If it does, uh, it'll be great, but I don't think it will. Because it kind of, there's kind of no reason to bring it back. Everything was resolved in the first season. I mean, his dad got killed, and the guy who killed his dad ended up dying. That's pretty much it. So, I mean, I hope he comes back because it was good, but if it don't, it don't. Look how long we've been waiting for Attack on Titans final season. That shit take a long time, man. That's the only complaint I have about Attack on Titan. It takes so damn long for a new season to begin. And I kind of just get tired of the waiting game, you know?
Yeah, probably. Fire Force and Dr. Stone, they were not just boring, they were stupid. And all those people who said that those shows would be very, very good or that they would be anime of the year contenders, where are y'all at now? I told y'all those shows were gonna suck. I told y'all they were just little one-off pieces of crap. Nobody listened. Nobody listened. I said it. I said Dr. Stone was going to be terrible. I said Fire Force was going to be terrible, and I was right. They were hype, and that's it. All flash and no substance. Told y'all. I've been watching anime for a long time, guys. I can look at a couple of episodes and tell you what something's going to be. And I knew those shows didn't have it. Like, we, none of us know what it is, but we know it when we see it. And those shows didn't have it. Attack on Titan, you saw it. You knew what it was. Same thing with Veil and Saga. You knew it when you saw it. These shows now, you... Whatever, you don't know nothing about them except they blow. Yeah, Neon Genesis is the better than those. Yes, it is. If I had a choice between the three, I would rather watch Neon Genesis. Yes. Look, I like a lot of the older stuff because I come from an older generation than you guys. So all those people who try to bag on me for liking older stuff, when you get older and younger kids come along, they're going to make fun of you guys for Dragon Ball Super and all this shit that y'all like because they're going to be newer shit when they come around. Some of you guys in your 20s right now, when you get in your 30s and, and, and mid-30s, the new crowd is going to make fun of y'all. Oh, look at that loser. He likes Dragon Ball Super. They're going to be on Dragon Ball Platinum or some shit like that by then. And they're going to be laughing at y'all for liking older anime. All you same ones who laugh at me right now, all my older anime is a million times better than all the shit you look at right now. There are guys in my Discord every day thanking me for putting them onto new shows. A guy just told me today he thanked me for putting him on to uh, Cash Earn Sins. He says one of the best anime he ever saw. Every time I recommend you guys an anime and you go watch it, y'all always say the same thing. Best shit I ever seen. Because I know anime. I know what I'm talking about. I know the good shit when I seen it. Dead Man Wonderland did have potential. It did. Had a lot of bad writing and shit, but it did have some potential. They screwed it up. Look, I, I keep telling you guys, there are just some basics. There is just some basics. Cash Iron Sins is not flashy. It ain't a bunch of, uh, of anime shit. You know, all the magical girls. It's a long, dramatized story about an immortal robot. And that's just a simple way of putting it. But go watch that shit. It's so fucking amazing. It's so story driven, man. Like, it is incredible how good it is. People just don't understand it. They like, oh, this is boring. I don't have the time to watch this. I would rather play on my phone. Well, look, don't cry about wanting some good anime to watch if you ain't going to be willing to watch it. It's called Cash Iron Sins. That's the name of it. Yeah, somebody just wrote it for you. Cash Iron Sins. It's so fucking good. I mean, it's one of the best anime of all time. Too many people sleep on the old stuff. Like, some of y'all probably never watched Trigun. I guarantee you most of y'all haven't seen it. Once you watch Trigun, you, man, you'll never go back to this old shit y'all, this bullshit y'all looking at now. I mean, it's so much good shit out there y'all passing up on in order to watch Dragon Ball Super. Like, some of y'all won't watch the older stuff because the animation don't look the way you want it. Cash Iron does not look like these new uh, anime. It don't look as good. It's not as bright and flashy as these new anime, but it don't need to be because it actually has a real story involved with it. And that's what's wrong with anime fans today. If it don't have all the flashy colors 
and the big boobs and the anime hentai girls, then people don't want to watch it. They only want to watch that shit. They don't want to watch a good anime with a good story because it just goes too far over their head. They don't want to be bothered with it. I like storytelling. I, I want my anime from episode one to however many it has to tell me a story. And I want it to be a story that makes sense once I get to the end of it. All the anime that I repeatedly mentioned to you guys, the final episode makes sense. And it links all the way back to the first episode. It makes perfect sense. Scribe is the perfect example. It's only 26 episodes. I think Cash Earn is only like 20 something episodes. And that's a testament to how good those shows are. Scryd only has 26 episodes, but it's 26 episodes that are so good that you don't need 100 episodes. You don't need 200 or 300 to tell the story. It does such a good job in that 26 episodes, that's all you need. That's how amazing it is. When a show needs all them extra episodes to get to the fucking point, don't nobody want to hear that shit after a certain amount of time. Man, Outlaw Star is some good shit. But there's some dudes who haven't even watched that. And they haven't even watched Cowboy Bebop. Like, that, man, listen, that's anime basics. If you haven't watched, if you have not watched Cowboy Bebop, then you need to just stop all anime, everything. Just stop and just walk away. Because I'm serious. It's some stuff that's so good that you guys are not looking at. Cause you're too caught up in Black Clover, Demon Hunter, and all this other trash. Shit, man, you give me a break on that shit. You got these anime sites with 10 or 20,000 different anime on there, and these guys watch the same ones every day. They don't even try to get the other stuff on there a chance. Shit, are you crazy? I'm getting down with mine. I'm watching every damn thing on there. Everything I can get my claws on. I'm not just going to be stuck with, oh, well, I uh, I recognize this show, so I'm just going to watch this show. Like, I, hold on, man. Let me show y'all something. Let me show y'all. This is the app on... Um, my uh, my anime unlimited app. I want I want to get y'all I want y'all to see what it looks like whenever you own it. If I can get my thing to work. Okay, there it is. I'll just go to the A section for starters. Hang on. Let me just, there it is. Now. Hang on. I don't know why this thing don't want to work whenever I'm streaming. Damn it, it did it again. I'm trying to um, get my thing to, um, to show, but it won't. Nah, fuck it. It don't matter. I'll show y'all next time. It Man 4. Yeah, I watched that. It's pretty good. It was pretty good for a finale. Yeah, I watched that. Shit was pretty badass. I, all the It Man movies are good to me. I like them all, so. Dude, I wouldn't... Ba listen, based on all the other older anime that I don't watch, as good as Bleach is, Bleach probably wouldn't crack my top five, honestly. I mean, there are a lot of, there are a lot of older ones than Bleach that are just way better than Bleach. So I don't really know to be honest. I don't know. I would have to sit down and actually put me a real list together. I might actually do a stream where I, I'd give you guys my top 10 anime of all time. That actually would be a good stream to do. 
that way I can once and for all tell you guys what I like and what I what I give a shit about. Cause there's some ones that are, that are old school that are just so much better than these newer stuff, even better than Bleach. And I like Bleach, but you know. Anyways, dudes and do that. We at the two hour mark, so I don't want to be on here too damn long. I don't want to wear out my welcome, as as they say in the business. But um, I'm going to try to get as much streaming as I can in uh, before Saturday because I leave Saturday to get back to work. I'll be on the road after Saturday. I'll be on the road for like four days after that, and then I'll be home. So I will throw up, you know, my little cell phone videos. Now, I'm going to take my laptop and my extra mic and stuff with me, and I'm going to try to find me an extra webcam around here somewhere, and I will try to maybe do some short streams or whatever. Uh, the best that I can do. I'll see. I mean, I'm not going to have a green screen or nothing like that. So it'll just be, you know, it's the best I can do kind of deal. I'll see about doing that. You know, that way I can at least try to stream a little bit. But it's not going to be anywhere close to this quality. So I'm just saying. But I got, a, um, I got another channel that I can use for that. I'm not going to mess up the style that's on my main channels. So I'll probably use, um, I'll definitely use my my stacks uncut channel and i'll probably use my uh, stacks versus anime channel to do some some lightweight streaming while i'm on the road that way i don't have to mess with my other channels and fuck them up so anyway guys i think we had a lot of fun tonight uh, appreciate everybody who came out y'all know the routine click the buttons damn i have 226 likes y'all niggas tore it up tonight i didn't even have to say hit the like button that's awesome <laughs> Back in business, baby. Anyway, dudes, let me get my ass up off of this thing because I need to try to get me a little bit of sleep. I'm catch up with y'all later, man. Uh -huh.